Anyway, we shouldn't forget why we're here tonight. Do you all know why you're here? Yeah. We're here to raise some money to fight this campaign against chucking everyone out of Holt's Field. Do you all know that, do you? Yes, you do. Because this horrible, evil man called, uh, what is he called? Tim Jones, isn't he? That's right. Well done, it's like the pantomime now, isn't it? <laughs> Behind you, yeah, I know he is. Um, <laughs> I have to say, actually, I hate Tim Jones, because I... No. Because I put a bid in for Holtzfield, right? <laughs> and, um, I was going to build a car park on it. <laughs> not really, not really. I um, first heard about Holtzfield through a, through a friend of mine who used to work, used to be a bus driver, and I was his conductor. And that was in 1966. And he invited me back to his house. We walked up the valley, and then to see this, this wonderful little setting of this small field with, surrounded by wooden chalets was, was quite amazing. I suppose Holtzfield is like my dream come true, <laughs> really. I mean, it's a, it just embodies everything I believe in, you know. Small little houses to house little families, nothing pretentious. I was born in my house. <laughs> I was born in my house as well. <coughs> Lived all my life. There's no roads, no traffic, no crime. Just no strange people, uh, just people that you know, and they, they know that they're safe, they feel safe. These wooden chalets down there are all owned by the occupiers, but the land was bought up in late 1980s by a property developing company who intends to evict everybody, demolish the uh, chalets and turn it, then develop the area. So we contacted our solicitor, who was recommended to us, and uh, he took the view that many of us perhaps did have the right to remain here simply because we've been here for so long. They suggested that uh, they negotiate for protected tenancies of the land and that offer was rejected. They suggested that they might like to purchase long leasehold interests, that offer was rejected. And they also suggested that they purchase the freehold from, from the company and that offer was rejected as well. So all attempts at reasonable negotiation by the occupants fell on deaf ears. It's almost like I'm, the law says I can evict you, so I will, because I can. He ever want to acute, he must, his parents must... When we started to get ourselves organised that we were going to fight Tim Jones and the Deep Stone, we had obviously had to have meetings of the people in the field to decide which way we were going to go and what we were going to do. But um, it has definitely made us all more aware of each other, who we are, what we are, why we want to stay here. We've been fighting legal battles now for about six years and we've lost most things. It seems like we're losing most things and we're now expecting an eviction of the first residents very soon. We can't live our normal lives at the moment. I haven't been out anywhere for a few days. I haven't gone shopping. I've had my children picked up from school because I'm afraid the bailiffs are coming. And I really don't know what's going to happen to, within the next month. I think it's quite important that we acknowledge the unique way of life that the people of Holtzfield actually have. It is immoral to remove that community and their homes in order to put luxury dwellings. To say that a developer is far more important because he's got money behind him seems to me crass stupidity. When they've demonstrated outside my office and when they've uh, performed outside my house, They've used words like battle, fight, emotive, words which mean great and wonderful things. There was a dispute. I don't think genuinely that they had the collective wish to buy it. Now, if that's right, then will they stop throwing all this bullshit around? Because basically, I am getting tired of it. We can't reach them. It's beyond our power to reach them. We've tried the mediation. We've tried writing, talking, offering to buy it, but no. I don't know what his agenda is, but I really don't understand him. We all at Holtzfield believe what's going on is wrong. And I'm amazed that it's got so far as it has done. 
we rigged up this system, this telephone tree, where somebody would ring a neighbour or a friend, and that friend would ring two other people and so on. So in a very, very short time, there'd be, theoretically, there'd be hundreds of people would know what was happening. And then all this all got a bit unreal because you were talking about lock-on points and cement and bars and chains and, uh, you know, uh, the, the emergent, the wire, the, you know, the alarm bells that went from the treehouse along my garden all there and, you know, and then the, the dawn patrols. I mean, it was, um, it was a real siege. And I thought, we're, you know, we're not in Northern Ireland, we're not in uh, Bosnia. Where are we? Is this like little corner of Swansea or the Gower? Uh, with rings of reinforced steel welded onto one lamp or coming out of this gas bottle, placed in the ground, shuttering put round that, and then concrete poured round that. And like I said, the other important thing is use a chain that they can't cut and just clip on to the bar that's going through the middle of the gas bottle welded on. We were actually keeping guard on the, the entrance to the field. There's, there's a track that comes down the field, which is about 400 yards long. And we built a little shelter at the top of the lane, and, and each of us in turn would, would sit there, you know, from, from dawn, literally from dawn till dusk. My tiny hands is frozen. I, some, I differ from day to day. Sometimes I feel really sad, although for some reason I haven't been able to have a good cry. And then other days I feel really angry that, he's be, that he can get away with what he's doing. In this day and age, you don't expect bailiffs to come smashing through your door. But that's exactly what happened. They came uh, when we were all getting ready for school, Sadie. They came down really early when we were all getting ready for school. And then before we knew it, there, was, there must have been about 30, well, probably more security guards, you know, the bailiffs uh, and police. But they didn't come down the lane, they actually came down the field and the, at the side and we didn't see them. It was so, like, planned, like, operation, it was like some bloody, you know, Warfare, sort of the way it went, you know, sneaking down behind, cutting the alarms, you know, and uh, you know, just the subterfuge, you know, and the whole, as if we were some sort of enemy. <laughs> Vicar and I were locked on with bicycle locks attached to a rather large chain. I simply went in to be with them and had myself chained to their chains. And it's completely through the bailiffs. They just didn't know what to make of this. The vicar walking in saying, no, you can't stop me. Sat down and locked on. The statement being made here by all my neighbours is that arms are locked on inside huge lumps of cement which are in the ground. Our hearts are locked on to this earth that we believe is our right to be here, you see. And then these, these bully boys are rough-handling young kids, you know. It's a bit older than John. They're rough-handling them, you know. And, and your men seem powerless to stop that. We need you to help us. We're desperate here. We all had our arms linked really tightly like this, locked together. And they couldn't get us apart. So they rolled the three of us across the kitchen floor at night booted the three of us out of, out of the door and we were still locked on to this tangle of people being like pushed through the back door. Yeah. You just smashed through, through the windows and, and picked up plates and smashed them and mirrors and, and stuff. Yeah. You just pulled up the carpet and smashed up the floorboard. Pulled down the stairs. Ripped the glue to things down. that they didn't need to do. The police were here and there were people breaking things and throwing things down the stairs and breaking my mirror upstairs and smashing the furniture, just throwing it down the stairs and sort of, well, practically throwing the children who were upstairs. 
My son, Tom, had gone over to help. He was up in the loft and they dragged him down the loft, dragged him down the stairs and just like threw him out. And, and he was crying and because there was loads of people crying and screaming and shouting. And, but um, I myself just personally just felt like so proud of, of Tom. You know, he'd gone over there to help, you know, a friend and neighbour. You know, and I was just, yeah, good for you, Tom, you know. Eventually, the police called the whole thing off because they realised that they simply couldn't remove Diane and Dee, although they had managed to get everyone else out. These two ladies were positively locked on and could not be removed as easily. Crazy. But basically they, they didn't succeed in securing the bungalow. It's quite unbearable thinking that might all come round again, you know. From recent company searches, it's shown that the indebtedness of the company to the bank is now probably in the order of some £700,000. Loads and loads of people have written to Barclays asking, why are you lending money to this company called them the Leedstone? Or we're trying to make 26 families homeless. Well, basically, it's the fact that Barclays Bank have continued to offer financial backing and support to Tim Jones. Um, Presumably when they loaned him the money it was because they thought they'd get it back one day when he developed Hull Steel, but he's never going to develop, he's never going to build on it. So we're asking Pat Barclays to call in his loan, basically. So the case has gone to uh, the House of Lords at the moment. We were considered to be like the strongest case, because we've been here for, you know, since 1971. Um, we'd had an agreement with the previous landowner, Mr Holt. So we were considered to be very strong. So. If we won our case, it would ultimately stand to reason that, that the other people would win their cases as well. Then building up towards the court case, because it meant so much and it meant the bailiffs could be coming back in for everybody, we, we didn't know what would be happening. We decided we'd walk to the House of Lords to present the papers and to raise support. <laughs> Fortunately for us, the House of Lords case was won by us, which means that there's probably at most half the people that live here who are now safe and that they've got um, security of tenure. The House of Lords have decided that because you can't distinguish between the wooden structure and the land upon which it rests, that they all merge into one. And the letting of the land was in effect a letting of the land together with the dwelling. Well, they haven't written themselves off, but what they've done is written off any ownership rights which they purported to have to the chalets. And it's not just the ownership rights to the chalets. It takes it further than that because you get into the refinement of their own argument that the chalets belong, all of them now, as I read the House of Lords judgment to Leedstone. All of them, without question. He doesn't seem to realise this. It's what we wanted. It's what we wanted all along. It's what we first, in 1989, we, we said, you know, we either want to like to buy it rent it or lease it and this is you know this is what we've got well it was all really fascinating i don't think we understood it all but it is all i think what really made a difference was them seeing the photographs because what happened at the high court in the court of appeal dude wasn't it yeah. 
because they never actually saw what they were making a judgment about. That will effectively put an end to any prospect for development of the land which this company may have ever had. Like, she's hope for me. May in the future just be left alone to just live always. I think the law has got to be looked into and changed if, if ordinary people like us have to go through this. So maybe it's not necessarily the landowner is the problem, but perhaps the actual, the system itself. Well, I keep telling people we haven't won yet. You know, it's another campaign, OK, that we've won. You know, another battle that we've won, maybe, but the whole damn war is still going on, and, you know, the enemy isn't going to surrender, you know? <laughs>